Uh, okay, so we downloaded Visual Studio Code and uh, we learned how to use Visual Studio Code and we learned also how to use the print built-in function, how to print a result. And we have learned that we can just print values from here. Uh, now, as you can see, Fundamentals of Python is actually the name of the project project means yeah the folder that has everything so i have to go to week one cd and tab and then uh, i can run the files and i have python then uh, test yeah to see the files you have to click over here right uh, but if you don't have this also instead of uh, dragging this up if you don't know how to do that or if it doesn't work uh, you can come here just in this just folder open in integrate terminal it just open for you and then you can run the files now for instance we can run python and hello world i am using uh, this the tab to complete the file name and it just run this code or if you don't like also this instead of just opening this or this maybe you can just click over here and it works and maybe if you want to run this file and just it runs for you great now let's learn python basics basics of python py so I'm just giving name for each file based on the topic I am going to cover. So we have this hash, do you know this, the hash symbol? We call it a comment. It's a comment, okay? So if you run it, if I run, nothing, because, because the above statement is, a comment so as you can see but this will be printed out right of course yeah so anything you write will not be executed for instance if you say uh, something like this i maybe to write or not to get to get an output from python you need to use a print function, built-in function. So this kind of statement or remark actually allow us to make our code redouble. So as you can see, I can make this down. So I'm using now the print. Let's see, let's see how print works. Yeah, so I'm now using the print, actually a print you have to have this parenthesis. Does print takes more? Yes, more argument. Yeah, first, second, whatever. Any number, you need 21, or maybe my age, 150, or other data type true we will come to data types soon false or maybe list of items papaya mango maybe now you can see that list of what list of items you may feel that a kind of fruity right it smells like fruity here papaya mango avocado or something and uh, if you just click it just print out. So this print state, I mean, function is so generous that it just take everything. But I will want to talk about the purpose of comment. The purpose of comment is actually to make your code redouble. Yeah, redouble. And now, for instance, I can say another uh, Python has many built-in 
functions example print yeah print and uh, print len input round it is now i can use again print i love the print function and then yeah so by now everybody should be uh, i mean you should know how to use the print function yeah at the least you should know how to write hello world right hello world like this because i will come to you soon and i want you to write that for me great now let's go to another file and make use of the different built-in functions because i don't want to write everything in one place great now i want to write built-in functions dot py did we use already built-in functions guys you tell me yes the print function yes great we have used the print function the print function is a built-in function that takes many many arguments not one or two it takes many many arguments arguments means anything we put anything we put as input as input uh, and it could be number whatsoever right yeah so what is this this is actually a comment anything that i write is like here it's like a note also now let's see step by step now first let's see print and then uh, we see length and then we see uh input and then see round round uh, but do you have to really remember all this yeah through process you will learn them okay but this these are some of them so i can use print i love using print because it shows me what's happening <laughs> it rhymes right okay yeah it really rhymes i love using print because it shows me what's happening oh yeah great so you see if you just write i mean click over here and you see i love using print because it shows me what's happening now you have used the print now let's see lane lane is actually to check the language of uh, a string we call this by the way guys string any text we call it string okay for instance print my name this is my name the longest name ever used and uh, oh yeah it's printed out but maybe if i just know the length of my name i can actually print it like this so first let me just check it manually uh one two uh, three four i think it's eight one two yeah it's eight eight characters oh yeah it is um maybe how about if i write print and then length of some other word maybe i if i say i ball <laughs> it's so so i ball i can see three characters here four characters uh seven but the empty space also will be counted so it's going to be eight characters again oh yeah so we have used this the lane built-in function building functions are functions available for you to use you had to have to worry about someone already built them so you can make use of you can make use of them uh, can we add another parameters no it just take only one argument okay just one it's not like print yeah great and also we can use actually if we have a kind of a list something like this i have now tomato how about potato and potato in the cart in the list in the to-do list or shopping list whatsoever and the milk 
How many items do you have on your, in your list? You tell me, guys. It's so easy to count. Three items. Yes, and Python also knows that it should give us three items. Great. Uh, so we have used the lane. Now, in, <laughs> this is good enough already. And we have this input. If I say input, and then if I say enter your name. And now if I run this, oh yeah, I can say, yes, but you know, we have to, after, after we just put this after, we have to save the name. To save that name, we need a variable. And I want to store it in a variable called name. Or maybe first name. So now we introduced a new terminology called variable. So what is variable? Variables, variables are actually uh, a place where to store data. So it allows to store data. So now whenever I just, uh, then I can print first name and the first name should give me anything we put in here. First, let's run. Now, this input allows you to ask data from the user, enter your name. Then when I just put this, this value will be saved in here. And now I'm printing it, so I have to see it downstairs. Yeah. I have to run it again, as you can see. Yeah, I see it here. Great. Can I get age? Yes, why not? Input, uh, uh, enter your age and some space, or you don't have to. And now let's run. Uh, I can just use this. Why not? Yeah, and the age 250. Yes, I'm older than you thought, but I think uh, I have to print also the age. Okay, great. Mm. Yeah, so now we have used the input built-in function. Uh, maybe this, uh, now we can just uh, comment this out. I showed you this commenting. Sometimes if you don't want to run your code, you can also comment it like this. Uh, I think control shift and miss some, I have this control and I can comment everything like this. Uh, yeah, but another way of commenting is multi-line comment, better way like this. And don't do that. Uh, I can do some control. Yeah. So you need this. Maybe I think I have to show you separately. Anything, anything we put here is a comment. A multi or multi line comment. <laughs> As you can see, we've been using this as a one line comment, but this, if we use this, uh, three code, uh, it's a multi-line comment. So that means it will not be executed. Yeah. So let's run again. Uh, now, since I don't like this actually input, it's asking me now and then I can comment it out and I will not be bothered. Now all my code is actually commented out and I don't have anything. Let me just run this again. But why is it asking me now and then? Uh, after this, there's nothing that bother us. Okay. Um, but now let's move on to the round. Round of 9.81. What do you think the rounding of 9 point? What? Print round 9.81. What's the rounding of nine point, like a proper rounding, you know, a fair, a fair rounding. What would be the fair rounding of 9.81? 10? Yes. 
For me, it should be. Now let's do another print round and then uh, 3.14. What would be the fair rounding of this? Of course, three. And now, of course, let's do round. And again, maybe if I have 2.77, what would be the fair rounding of this? Again, three. three yeah. Now print the rounding of 2.51. What would be the rounding of this? 2.50. I'm afraid it might be two. Oh, is it? Oh yeah, actually it should be five, yeah. Uh, how about, this surprised me all the time. Yeah. As you can see, if it's just a zero, it downs, uh, but at least if it has one, it go up. That's great. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense, right? Yeah. So that it's a fair, fair rounding. Great. So now we have seen how to use built-in functions. Of course, if you come to this and uh, this uh, 30, I mean, 10 days of uh, Python, you can see different built-in functions. Oh, uh, a voice is coming, guys. Uh, you may turn off your webcam or uh, mic. Uh, absolute value, uh, this input open to open a file, a stir. Actually, I have to select some of them again and we have to see them. Okay, uh, we have, for instance, uh, this the absolute value is a very good. Uh, and int uh, stir and uh, another to see uh, we can see enumerate all some of the difficult one later because it's so hard for you to understand what's happening and uh, may be sum is so easy sum and mean and max. And of course, I should have said type. Okay, and bool. We have seen len and range. Yeah, I can also use ID. ID is so strange. Uh, dir is also good. Um, uh, the reason why I'm selecting guys, some of the methods should be learned later because it doesn't make sense now. Okay. So now what we are learning, guys, as you have seen, we've been uh, looking at some of the methods, uh, the uh, not method, sorry, the functions, built-in functions. We know now how to use print. We know how to use len. We know how to use round. We know, uh, I mean, input. We know how to use round. Great. Now let's use absolute value. For instance, if you want to know the absolute value of minus five, I think everybody knows, right? What's the absolute value of minus five? Five, just the positive, okay? And then sometimes we want to change number. If you say, for instance, uh, this two, this is not a number, it's a string, guys. It's not the number, it's a string. If you do this, it will be wrong. Can we do this? No, we can't because this is a string and this is a number. It's wrong, as you can see. Now Python gave me uh, that, it, it gave me a feedback. Trace back, go to line number 28 and this line can, not only, con uh, can only concatenate a string not int. So this one is a string and this one is 
uh, an int. So I have to change this to an integer first. How do I change it to an integer? So like this. And now I am expecting what? What am I expecting from this now, guys? You tell me. Four. Yes, it should be four. But again, now print two last two. And if I do again, oh, it's an error. Now my idea is not just to change this one. Instead, I want this two to be string. And then if I change this string, actually I am going to concatenate them. Concatenate means uh, like connecting them. So it will be two, two, 22. Yeah, two, two. This is not a number by the way. It's just, you can call it whatever, zero, two, two, and whatever. So it's a kind of, it could be a zip code, yeah? So we are concatenating this. So I changed this first, the integer to string because I am concatenating this, uh, because uh, to concatenate, hello, class, world. And this is actually concatenating. Hello world. But as you can see, there's no space. If you want to have space, you can add like this. And again, hello world. Great. Now we have learned the absolute value, the int, the string sum actually is a way to print the sum of numbers sum. And then if I do one, two and three, the sum of one, two, three, I think you may expect six, right? Yeah, but it says, no, no, this is not how, it should be a list, it should be a list. Now I should get six, great. Now, how about if I use the mean and the max? Mean of one, three, uh, four, 10, and minus 10. What's the minimum number in these uh, numbers? I think for me, I can see that minus, minus 10. 10, yeah. Great, minus 10 is the least. And as you can see, Python is so smart and it gave us the minimum number. You can write it as in like this or as in at least the mean actually works so fine in a different form, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so let's see again from, yeah. And also you can also find the maximum. What's the maximum in this list? For me, the maximum will be 10. Yeah, the maximum number. Oh yeah, great. Now let's see type. What the type does is actually so far, as you can see, we've been working with text. For instance, if I say print and my name, it's actually a text, right? And the type should be string. So how do we check it? Type is another method. And then I just give, so I'm expecting what? A string, let's see. Yes, ter, great. How about if you check type of 2021? Is it a number or a string? What are you expecting? Yeah, that sounds like a number. It's a number. Uh, so it's the number is integer, as you can see. Now, if you say print type, and if you write 9.81, what are you expecting? And then it should be a float. We call it this decimal numbers, a float, yes. And then if you give print type, and then again, one plus one J, it's a complex number. We don't deal with complex number, but just to show you that uh, Python identify also complex numbers, it says complex number. Great, uh, print type, and if I give the for a Python, hey, one, two, three, I have a list of numbers over here in Python. Tell me that, oh, that's a list, right? Have you seen? Now I have been using this type to identify if it's a string 
or if it's a number, an integer, if it's a float, or if it's a complex number, or if it's a list. And even sometimes we can also put uh, numbers like in, uh, uh, we call this uh, uh, tuple. Tuple is something if you write like this, we call it tuple, but you don't have to worry about that. It's a different format and we will cover that tuple. Really? How about if we change this one to a curly bracket and we call it set? Sets a collection of items, right? You learn this uh, this in math. I mean, this in your mathematics lesson, yeah? Long, long time ago, maybe in elementary or your junior high school set. Yeah. And maybe you can have also a dictionary. A dictionary is something like that. Hey name and if the name is like somehow by the way guys we will go through everything step by step uh, later or in another lesson so this is just an introduction so to see how this type is uh, uh, used yeah the type is dictionary yeah so what type is actually maybe i can show you for instance uh, i mean the, the dictionary dictionary means something for instance hey what is sana in uh, english we call it uh, in uh, a word right what is a uh, talo in uh, the talo for yes it's a house right so something like that and maybe how about a person or a man? It may be Mies, right? And it's going to be man. Yes, yeah, something like that. So this is actually a dictionary. Is it only for language or something? No, for different reason we use dictionary structure, data structure, okay? So it's a dict. Uh, now let's move on to Boolean. Okay, we can uh, print type. If I say one is greater than zero, uh, guys, we didn't do comparison before, but anyway, I'm introducing this. Is one greater than zero? It is. Yes, it is. So that means it is true. The value is true. And that true value is going to be Boolean type. So the type is Boolean. Have you seen? Or you can just check print type, uh, the type, just what type. And if I say true, it's true. The term true by itself is a Boolean. And if you say print type, false is a Boolean. And anything you get after you compare something is also the length of my name is this is greater than the length of the Python. Is that true? Let's check now if we have to count it. It's eight, I know it, but this one is one. One, two, three, six. So that's true actually, this is true and it's a Boolean. Oh yeah, it's true first. First I get this from this true, let's see the value. True, great. And you can check in the value to Boolean, but why you care? Just now, I think we're about range. Oh yeah, range. Let's talk about range. If you say range and put 10, that means actually you get range of numbers. Range of numbers between, range of numbers between zero and 10. Yeah, this is very powerful. So. This actually has zero as in starting and the end is 10 and the stepping is one. That means it increased by one. And to know the least, actually it's better to use the list, the list function. So we have this list also now. Huh? So we have to use that. The list allow us to create list. Now, if you go, oh, zero to nine, but we can also start, we don't have to start from zero. We can start from one, one to nine, but it doesn't include the last one. Uh, can we increment by one, like one, two, three, four? We can also increment by two if we want. Okay, 
Uh, so we, you don't have to really worry about this. We will come later. And then ID. ID is just a kind of a fancy uh, function there, and it generate random ID for you. Just ID like that is good enough. Oh, but I think you can just pass any random number here. For instance, zero. Uh, it just print something, yeah. Oh, or just one, just to generate some random number for you, okay? Great, and uh, there are uh, some, for instance, if you want to know about something there, and you can pass there. For instance, you write some string. Uh, okay, what's the, uh, how to deal with a string? Okay, whatsoever. And then if you write this, you get this. That is because this is a string and it gives you uh, methods related to string. And now even this dir is also will not be so clear for you. No, don't worry about it. For the time being, these built-in functions are good enough for you. And if you don't get them all at once when I'm teaching right now, don't worry. If you know how to use print and len for the time being, that's good enough. But it's just the exposure is good enough, okay? And I, I hope you can also go through it again and that make things much clearer, okay? Yeah, I think uh, this is good enough and I have to stop the recording and we have to move on to variables and data types. I think first it's better to talk about data types.